All right, so we're gonna do an example with Sputnik here, the first satellite in orbit around the Earth. So it says Sputnik circled the Earth once every 90 minutes. So they just gave us the period there at an altitude of 2.8 times 10 to the fifth meters. That's, that's about 174 miles. That's about the distance from Wausau to St. Paul. So isn't terribly high off the surface of the Earth when you think about the size of the Earth itself. The radius of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the sixth meters. What is the tangential speed required to get Sputnik to orbit. So how fast is Sputnik moving out there? And so why was that so difficult to get a satellite into orbit? Well, it has a lot to do with that speed. So if I think about tangential speed, that's the V, and they gave me the period, okay. So that's telling me that in order to do this, the speed is gonna be the circumference two pi r divided by the period. So we need to know what is the r value for that orbit. So in order to find that, I need to add the radius of the Earth and the height provided. So I can add those two numbers together to get the radius of that orbit. And I get 6.66 times 10 to the sixth meters here. Go ahead, plug this in for the radius period. Oh, it's 90 minutes. We will have to change that to seconds. So go ahead, get rid of minutes, go to seconds, 60 seconds and one minute. Plug those numbers in, we get a speed of 7,749 meters per second. Uh, that's more than 17,000 miles per hour. That's fast. So why is it so difficult to get a satellite to orbit? Because you need that much speed in order to get it to orbit. So you do need a lot of rocket power to get that to happen. Part B wants to know what is the mass of Earth? And so an interesting thing we can find out is if something is in orbit around another object, say for instance, the moon orbits the Earth, if we know how far away it is and we know the period we can calculate the mass of the object being orbited. And so let's see how we find that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our free body diagram. So I sum up the forces parallel to the radius set equal to MAC. Now the only force holding Sputnik in orbit here is the force of gravity. So force of gravity is gonna be MAC. Now I can't just use MG here because we're not at the surface of the Earth. So I need to use that universal law of gravitation. So I got big G, the mass of the Earth, the mass of Sputnik divided by that radius squared is equal to the mass of Sputnik times the centripetal acceleration. And you'll see that the mass of Sputnik cancels out, meaning we don't need to know the mass of the object orbiting in order to find the mass of the object being orbited. Now, AC, we will make a substitution here. We're gonna put in that substitution of V squared over R. We already found V in part A. And we're gonna finish by solving for M. So capital M is gonna be A, which was V squared over R. And then I gotta move these two over, so I gotta have R squared divided by big G. One of my R's cancels for me. And so now it's about typing those in. Hopefully you did store this big G in your calculator. Otherwise, big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And the units on that one, we got newtons times meters squared over kilograms squared. All right, let's go ahead. Let's plug in that 7749 number. Let's plug in the 6.66 times 10 to the sixth and let's plug in the big G. And we get a mass of the Earth of 5.99 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Very close to the actual mass of the Earth, which is like 5.97, I think. Um, but also remember that we're assuming circular motion and Sputnik was not in circular motion, it was in elliptical. All right, part C wants to know what is the acceleration of gravity at that height? So this is a very similar height for a lot of satellites. So for instance, the International Space Station is up there. Um, and we might wanna know what is the acceleration of gravity? Because everything looks like it's in free fall up there, which it is in free fall because that's what orbit is. So we have this apparent weightlessness, but there's still gravity up there. So there's still an acceleration of gravity. So how do we find the acceleration of gravity? 
Well, if I think about the force of gravity, I can use it as mg, or I can talk about it as big M, little m times big G, all divided by r squared. So if I want to find the acceleration of gravity at any point, the mass is canceling, so the acceleration of gravity is going to be dependent on the mass of the object and how far are you center to center from that object. So let's go ahead and take the mass of the Earth we just found, the radius for Sputnik's orbit to figure out the g value up there. And again, make sure you have stored that big G in your calculator. It just makes it a little easier to calculate. So go ahead, take that number you have stored, take this number, plug it in there, and you should get a little over 9 meters per second, 9.02 meters per second squared. So here on Earth, it's 9.8. If you go up 174 miles to where Sputnik orbits, where the International Space Station orbits, you're around 9 meters per second squared for an acceleration of gravity there.